As land disturbing activities occur on an active construction site, bare soils and unvegetated areas are exposed to erosive forces. Stabilizing these areas as soon as possible helps to keep soils in place, preventing erosion as well as sediment from moving. It also helps to reduce the amount of accumulated sediment deposits and maintenance needed on other installed BMPs. It is important to note that these measures require frequent monitoring and maintenance to ensure that the soil surface is adequately protected. This video is the third in a series focusing on Active Construction Site Best Management Practices, or BMPs, for handling stormwater runoff, including erosion and sediment control. In this video, we will cover the practices that can stabilize open, exposed areas on your site. Topics include seeding, mulching, including hydro mulch and straw, blankets and mats, polymers, riprap slope protection, and surface roughening. Seeding. What is the practice? What does it do? Temporary seeding involves the establishment of rapid growing annual grasses or small grains to stabilize disturbed areas until a permanent non-erosive cover, such as one produced by applying permanent seeding, can be established. Dormant seeding is a temporary or permanent seeding application at a time when soil temperatures are too low for germination to occur, usually less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And frost seeding refers to applying seed in late winter when soils are in the freeze-thaw stage. Sod placement means to lay a continuous cover of grass sod over exposed soil. Hydro seeding is applying a slurry of water, wood fiber mulch, seed, and fertilizer to prevent soil erosion and provide an environment conducive to plant growth. How does it work? Fine and coarse root systems hold soils in place. Root growth begins with seed germination. How to install? Prepare and amend soil as needed. The SWIP will include appropriate plant species, seed or seed mixtures based on quick germination, growth, time of year, soil type, soil pH, region of the state, and intended land use of the area to be seeded. Apply according to the SWIP specifications. Use anchored mulch to protect the seed bed, to retain moisture, and to encourage plant growth. How to maintain. Repair damaged, bare, gullied, or sparsely vegetated areas and then fertilize, reseed, and apply an anchor mulch. If vegetation fails to grow, consider soil testing to determine soil pH or nutrient deficiency problems. Other seed or seed mixtures may need to be selected. If using sod, keep moist until fully rooted. How to inspect. Inspectors should check for evidence of erosion or movement of mulch as well as adequate cover, 80% density. Mulching, including hydro mulch and straw. What is the practice? What does it do? Mulching is the application of plant residues, materials, to enhance the protective vegetative establishment and minimize erosion potential. Hydro mulching is applying a slurry of water, wood fiber, mulch, and often attack a fire to prevent soil erosion. Straw mulch consists of placing a uniform layer of straw and incorporating it into the soil with a studded roller or anchoring it with a stabilizing emulsion. How does it work? It prevents erosion by protecting the soil from wind and water impact, provides temporary surface stabilization, prevents soil from crusting, conserves soil moisture, moderates soil temperature, and promotes seed germination and seedling growth. How to install? Apply and anchor mulch as shown in the construction plans. Mulch should have a uniform density of at least 75% over the soil surface. How to maintain? Repair damaged areas, reseed, apply new mulch, and anchor the mulch in place. How to inspect? Inspectors should check for evidence of erosion or movement of mulch. Blankets and mats, TRMs. What is the practice and what does it do? An erosion control mat, ECM, is a temporary protective mulch blanket or soil stabilization mat constructed with rolled erosion control product, or RECP. Turf reinforcement mats, or TRMs, are high strength and can be left in place permanently. How does it work? It works by limiting erosion from rainfall or overland flow or to enhance revegetation. How to install? Install per the manufacturer's specification and as shown in the construction plans. The chosen RECP should be applied up and down the slope, never along the contour and as shown in the construction plans. Blankets and mats must be anchored. How to maintain? Pull back portion of the blanket covering eroded areas, add soil and tamp, reseed the area, replace and staple the blanket. How to inspect? Inspectors should check for erosion or displacement of the blanket. Polymers. What is the practice and what does it do? Polymer flocculation is used for soil stabilization, such as erosion control, and sediment control of construction site stormwater runoff. Polymers are formulated to work with site-specific soils and water chemistries. 
Typical passive treatment BMPs such as detention basins, check dams, and perimeter controls are ineffective for removing suspended soils or turbidity from stormwater. With flocculation, BMP performance is enhanced, reducing stormwater turbidity and its aquatic life toxicity. Polymer-enhanced BMPs yield clean water, reducing sediment, pesticide, and nutrient loading to riparian areas. How does it work? Flocculation is the process where a flocculant, such as a polymer, is used to reduce the turbidity of stormwater by binding particles at the soil surface or within the stormwater to form larger particles, flocks, that are heavy enough to stay in place, erosion control, or settle in the bottom of the stormwater and or be captured within the construction site's perimeter. How to install. Soil polymers should never be used without first testing site soils in water. A basic soil test will determine the appropriate polymers type and the application rate for each construction site. Polymer systems are always installed with proper attention to three steps. First mixing, second settling, and third capture. Polymers are installed in the form of dry powder, a liquid emulsion, or in a block like soap on a rope. Powder and liquid polymers are applied with a hydro seating, other spraying equipment, or in cooling lubricated water for concrete or hydro demolition equipment. These installations are service applied onto soil, concrete erosion, erosion control matting, and geojute and dispersion fields, check dams, and upstream of particle curtains. Powders are service applied and mixed into the top three feet of saturated sediments prior to removal. Polymer blocks are installed in treatment ditches, closed pipes, split pipes, in-stream baskets, waterfall mixing systems, and dewatering sediment basins. How to maintain. A basic soil test will determine the appropriate polymer's type and the application rate for each construction site. If sufficient water clarification is not realized, revisit site soil in water testing. Ensure the polymer system is sufficient for proper mixing, settling, and capture. Take care to replace geojute or other capture mechanism. Remove capture sediment to ensure containment within the site perimeter. Once the polymers have been in contact with an amount of suspended soil particles sufficient to exhaust the rate of polymer applied, a reapplication may be necessary. How to inspect. Check for site-specific basic soil test report. Ensure polymer type and application rate are in accordance with the soil test report. Check for adequate mixing, settling, and capture. Check for exhaust polymer applications after rain events, during dewatering, and concrete demolition operations. Ensure captured flock is removed and prevented from traveling beyond the site perimeter. Riprap. What is the practice and what does it do? Riprap slope protection is an erosion control measure consisting of geotextile fabric and stone riprap that is placed on an unvegetated slope of two to one or flatter. How does it work? It protects the soil from erosive forces. How to install? Construct as shown in construction plans, preparing subgrade, placing bedding material, and then placing appropriately sized riprap. How to maintain? Properly designed and installed riprap usually requires very little maintenance. How to inspect? Inspectors should check for displacement of riprap material, slumping, and erosion along the edges, especially on the downslope side. Surface roughening. What is a practice? What does it do? Surface roughening is a measure used to create an intricate pattern of ridges and valleys on slopes until seeding can occur. How does it work? It protects the soil surface from erosive forces, traps eroding soil particles, enhances vegetative establishment, but not if the surface is smooth and hard, reduces runoff velocity, and increases infiltration. How to install? Use implements that can be safely operated on the slope. For example, disc, tiller, spring harrow, or a front end bucket loader with teeth to create a series of ridges and depressions that run parallel to the slope contour as shown in construction plans. How to maintain. Fill eroded areas to slightly above the original grade, then reseed, ply mulch, and anchor in place. How to inspect. Inspectors should check seeded slopes for rills and gullies. Surface stabilization is one of the most important principles of erosion and sediment control. Reducing erosion at the source is much more effective and efficient than trying to trap suspended sediment in surface water runoff. This video covers only a small portion of the many BMPs and products that can be used to adequately stabilize exposed soils. Please refer to local and or state regulations and technical standards that contain the detailed requirements for your project site. Thank you for doing your part to improve the water quality in our local, state, and national water bodies. Our next video will discuss BMPs needed for outlet protection and grade stabilization.